How about boys and girls? It is Miss Scott from Scotland, but I have a secret. You cannot tell Miss Kelly, okay? Okay. So, uh, I went out the other day, and I went out in the public outside, um, and I had the mask on. And all these people, they did not have masks, and they saw me, and they said, you look crazy. So I went outside without a mask. It's, I am so dangerous. It is so dangerous. But you cannot tell Miss Kelly. Okay. Okay, I... Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. We are so thankful for you. We love you. And I know each and every one of our Metro kids will make you feel as special as possible today. Today is your day. So this morning, we're going to talk about not giving in to peer pressure. You know, peer pressure is something that happens to all of you when somebody says, hey, you need to do this. Everybody's doing it. But you really don't have to do that. You need to follow God's word. You see, our scripture for today comes from Romans 12, too. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this okay, world. Okay, 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 I did it. I did it. I, I can't keep a secret anymore, Miss Kelly. Scott. I'm so sorry, Miss Kelly. Scott. I'm so sorry. Sorry I about won't do it again. What? I, well, I went, I went outside without the mask. <gasps> Scott, I've talked to you about wearing your mask when you go to the stores. Yes, I, I, I know, but I have one on now. Well, I'm glad you have one on now, Scott, but why did you take it off? Well, I, I went out. I went out with the mask, uh -huh. like usual. Yes. And, and then some of my friends, they were not wearing masks. They said, you look crazy in that crazy mask, Scott. I said, oh, no. Oh no, so I took my mask off so I could so I could be like my like my friends. Oh Scott. But but, but I'm so sorry, Miss Kelly. I, I I wish I did not. It's okay, Scott. You just have to learn that you don't need to give in to what all your friends are always saying and doing if it's the wrong thing. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry they were mean to you, Scott. It is okay. They they will understand when I tell them. I say, look, Miss Kelly says I have to wear a mask. Yes, you have to follow the rules. Or Scott. else I start coughing and things. I know, you don't want to get sick, do you? No. Well, Scott, thank you for sharing your secret with me. How is it a secret? Oh, well, I, I, was, I was not telling you. You weren't telling me. Who did you tell, Scott? I, well, I told them. <gasps> You told all the boys and girls? Did they did they tell you? They did not tell me. Hmm. They kept Good a job. secret from me. They kept it a secret, Scott. But I told you, so it is okay. It's okay now. It is okay. They do not have to be in trouble. But Scott, you're gonna need to listen to the lesson this morning and find out why you shouldn't give in to peer pressure. Yes, ma'am. And ma the things that other people say that you should do that are wrong. Yes, ma'am. I I will make sure. All right, Scott. Well, can you bring us our scripture for today? And I'll tell you what, so that we can hear you better. Yes. I'm going to allow you to take your mask Oh, thank off. you. I'll do right back. Okay. You're welcome. Oh, much better. Much All better. All right, Scott. Okay, okay. Here we go. Oh, do not conform to the pattern of this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that is from Romans 12, 3. 12 what? 12, uh, oh, 2. 2. Woo! Very good, Scott. You yes. had it all the way until the end, but we are still very, very proud of you. Thank you, thank you. You are welcome. I well, Scott, good. I don't know that all of our boys and girls at home really understand what it means when it says, do not conform to the pattern of the world. Hmm. Do you know what that means, Scott? Conform, like... Um, that, I, I do not, I don't know either, Miss Kelly. Well, when it's talking about not conforming to the pattern of the world, it means that you do not always have to be like the world. Oh. You don't always have to be like all of your friends. If they're doing things that are wrong and that are not good, you don't need to feel the pressure to go and do what they're doing. It's okay to stand alone because no matter what, 
God's always there with you. He's always going to stand with you and help you. So when it talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's talking about how God speaks to us to give us the strength to stand, even if we have to stand alone to do the right thing. Yes, yeah. Like, so I'd, when my friends say, how that mask looks crazy, I can say, that is okay. I don't have to be like you. That is correct. God made you you, Scott. I believe you are the only green, triangle-headed, crazy, hot pink hair, orange nose friend on the planet. That but guess the, what, Scott? We love you just the way the you are. That is the nicest thing someone has ever said to me. Is it? That You heard it here first, kids. They heard it. There is no one else like Scotty Mac from Scotland. You are right. Your pizza-loving self. Oh, that reminds me. I have to go back to my pizza. Okay. All right, Scott. We're going to let you go so you can go eat. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good time.
see, just like Scott was telling us earlier, sometimes it's easy to give in to what your friends say, especially if they're making fun of you. You see, sometimes your life can be like a pencil. And when you see that everybody else is doing something, even if it's wrong, you may look around and you may say, hey, my mom or dad, they're not here. They won't know. Miss Kelly won't know. Nobody's going to know that I did this. And as people are talking, your life just begins to break under the peer pressure. But there's no need for you to give in to all that pressure. You see, Jesus died on the cross. And when he died on the cross, they put nails in his hands and in his feet. This is a pretty big nail. And here is your life when it's attached to Jesus. You see, we don't have to give in to peer pressure. When we decide to worship, this rubber band's going to represent worship. You listen to music, to Christian music that's uplifting. And we know that our worship belongs to God. And then when you pray, you ask God to help you and give you strength to stand up to peer pressure. And then this rubber band is going to represent reading your Bible. When you read God's word, it fills you with his truth and all the things that you need to do to stand up against peer pressure. You see, when you do all those things, there's no way that you can break under the peer pressure because you are attached to God. Now, there's a story in the Bible about three boys. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, these three boys would not bow down to an idol, but the king, his name was Nebuchadnezzar. Can you all say that? Nebuchadnezzar. Very good. The king had built this huge idol. It was 90 feet high, made of gold. It was nine feet wide. That's almost as wide as the stage. It was huge, and King Nebuchadnezzar was demanding that everyone bow down and worship this idol. Well, you know, most people were giving in to the pressure of King Nebuchadnezzar, and they were bowing down and worshiping this idol. But these three boys, they stood together, and they stood up for what is right. They did not give in to the pressure to bow down to this idol. Well, here's the thing. They didn't just have a little pressure on them to bow down to this idol. They had a ton of pressure. You see, they had this fiery furnace. It was this huge fire. And if they didn't bow down and worship that idol, King Nebuchadnezzar said that they were all three going to be thrown into a fire. Can you imagine that? I mean, I'm sure most of you were thinking, I would just bow down and give in to the pressure. But they didn't because they knew that God was with them. And this is what the Bible says about what they did. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods. Or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. So he was probably very mad at them for not giving in to the pressure he was putting on them. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound. So their hands and their feet were tied, and they were thrown into that furnace. The king's command was so urgent, and the furnace was so hot, that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. You see, when Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were in the fire, and there was a fourth man, that fourth man 
was the Son of God. It was the Son of our God that we serve. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not give in to the pressure. And if you want to know what happened to them, they walked out of the fire. They were fine. Their clothes were fine. Their hair was fine. It wasn't messed up. Their hair wasn't burnt. And they didn't even smell like smoke because God rescued them from the fire. They knew that they should not give in to peer pressure. They wanted to serve the king of all kings. Now, this morning, if you have any type of tinfoil around your house, I sent an email out to your parents saying what you would need this morning. So, if you have that tinfoil already, you may get the tinfoil and a quarter. If you don't have a quarter, a penny, a dime, a nickel, it'll all work just the same. Now, here is my tinfoil. And if you look closely, you can almost kind of sort of see your reflection in it, but not really. You don't have to have a huge piece. I'm going to break off just a little piece right here. And so you see this tinfoil right here. It's just normal. There's really not a picture in it. There's nothing here at all that you can see. But when I have this quarter, and I'm going to put it on heads, the head size, I'm going to put on the tinfoil. I'm going to press it very, very hard. And I'm going to rub it because you see the people that you are around they end up rubbing off on you. Their thoughts rub off on you. The things that you say are things that they probably said. It all rubs off on you. Usually you end up wanting to look like your friends or have the same clothes or dolls or play the same sports, be on the same team because friends rub off on each other. And just like they rub off on each other, when you rub that quarter in on both sides, you can see the outline of the quarter. You can see the head. You can even see the wording. Because it just goes to show you that whatever you're pressured to do is what rubs off. So I want you to think today about the friends that you're around. Think about the friends that you talk to. Think about the shows that you watch. You do not want to give in to that peer pressure. You want to be around people who encourage you, who encourage you in the word. You want to be able to know that even if you have to stand alone, that God's always with you. It's better to not be around friends who talk bad about you. It's better to not be around friends who are going to push you to do the wrong thing. It's better to stand alone and have God stand. So let's pray. God, I thank you so much for every child who's watching today. And I thank you for sending your presence to be with them. Lord, I pray today that you'll reach into their hearts, Lord, and if there's anybody who's dealing with facing peer pressure from any side, God, that you will take that pressure off of them and that you will be right there with them and allow them to see that it's better for them to stand alone and to stand with you and become who you would like them to be in your image rather than hanging around friends that are not good for them. And God, I pray that you will fill every child's life with wonderful Christian friends who will uplift them and help them to become all that you have created them to be. And we thank you for what you're going to do in and through every child. In your name I pray. Amen.